Thank you. Yes, it's a, it's a pleasure for me to present uh, my team, uh, platform, uh, platform that analysis the polyphenol. And, uh, it's an analytical facility for the characterization of, uh, of polyphenol. So, uh, you know me, uh, we've met at the, at the coffee break. Uh, you know aussi, you know also uh, some of my, uh, my work with, uh, with colleagues, with Virginie Rossard, Yves Latria, Rémi Sergien. But uh, very few know about the, 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 the PFP. So uh, the platform is the characterization of, uh, of polyphenol. What is polyphenol? Well, the polyphenol is a, a poly, uh, phenol is a, an aromatic cycle with a, an OH branch, branch on it. And, uh, and polyphenol are simply molecules with many phenols. And we, I won't give you a lesson on polyphenol polyphenols, but I would want you to remember first that polyphenols are very important in, uh, in food and especially in wine, because in wine they are responsible of the, of the color, the anthocyanins are responsible of the color of red wines, and, uh, and tannins are responsible of the, the astringency of red wines. And uh, polyphenols also have the, the ability to uh, to bind to the, together to uh, to form uh, uh, complexes, to polymerize, in fact, and this uh, leads to uh, evolved polyphenols and very complicated structures. And many many laboratory many, many laboratories have the ability to characterize simple polyphenols. But we have the, the, the skills to characterize mm -hmm. evolved polyphenols, which is much more complicated. Um, polyphenols are important in food, but uh, food doesn't contain only polyphenols. There are many other, other compounds. And uh, to, to perform a good characterization of, uh, of food, uh, we can have a support from PURB. PURB, with, uh, uh, which is a um, uh, research infrastructure, which gathers four analytical facilities. So you have um, BIBs in Nantes for the quantification of proteins uh, and polysaccharides. You have agro-resonance in uh, Clermont-Ferrand for uh, imagery in NMR. Uh, Chemosense in Dijon for the quantification of volatile compounds and also sensory analysis. And then us uh, for the for the characterization of polyphenols, and uh, PROB itself belong to uh, a national uh, research infrastructure, bigger, <laughs> uh, which is uh, called CALIS for consumers, food, and uh, health. So we are the part uh, food of CALIS, but there are two other parts. There is one part of uh, consumers that is people which who are which are able to uh, to evaluate the behavior of consumers, and also another part uh, on health people which are able to evaluate the, the sensory benefits uh, of uh, of food on health. Uh, but uh, let's uh, go back to the. The PFP. Uh, to the PFP, we are just a little uh, analytical facility, just uh, five uh, people, but uh, we cover uh, analytical uh, domains, uh, NMR, uh, nuclear magnetic resonance, uh, mass spectrometry, high resolution mass spectrometry, and chemometrics, and I am uh, responsible of the, the chemometric pole. Uh, at the PFP, we perform uh, targeted uh, analysis, also untargeted uh, analysis, uh, uh, traceability, and uh, some expertise about uh, polyphenol. And I uh, will illustrate uh, all these uh, uh, these skills with uh, a few a few applications. Uh, let's begin with uh, the high resolution mass spectroscopy. Uh, we have two devices which are new. They have been uh, acquired two years ago. Uh, so we, are, we have got an uh, Orbitrap, Exploris, and a Teamstop. And we'll begin with the, the Orbitrap. What can we do with uh, such a device? 
uh, such a device is able to to, to produce uh, ions from a compound uh, ions that is that is we on the, on, the, on a given molecule you will add or re remove uh, a proton hydrogen and so these ions will be detected later and so uh, you can uh, you can uh, you, you obtain the the, 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 mach the, the machine yields ions and this is very useful to uh, determine the, the exact molecular weight from uh, an ion. The fact that we have uh, a very precise uh, molecular weight. Uh, if you take the example of, of uh, catechin, and which is a, which is a simple uh, polyphenol, we know the, the raw formula, C15, H14, O6, and so uh, it's uh, very easy, it's a straightforward to obtain here the, the exact molecular weight of uh, such uh, such molecule. <coughs> what uh, the, the PAP allows is to do exactly the, the reverse. It's much complicated because here you've got just a value. Here, for example, it's a measure of value here, 290.0791, uh, which is different from the, the real value. But you've got uh, a good precision in mass. And we've got uh, this equation to solve, yeah, and to find the value of x, y, and z, knowing the, the atomic weights of uh, C, H, and O. In uh, low resolution mass spectrometry, uh, such an equation cannot be solved because you have uh, plenty of solutions, and the good one is among a uh, lot of solutions with, uh, which uh, correspond to nothing. But in high resolution, uh, you, you will have just one or a few solutions possible because of uh, of all the, the, the digits after the, after the dots here. You can see that hydrogen, the, the, the molecular weight of uh, hydrogen, for example, is not one. It's 1.007, 8.2, etc. And, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, we re rely on this property to obtain uh, the, the value of x, y, and z, and uh, to determine that uh, our compound uh, is uh, is close to very close to the, to a catechin, and that it may be uh, a catechin. Very, very interesting. <laughs> Uh, I've talked about uh, MS1, but there is also MS2. So with MS1, we produce ions in the, in the right uh, up, uh, left up corner. But with MS2 here, we begin with uh, the production of ions as, as if in MS1, but we'll be able also to select an ion among all the, that have been produced, to select this ion and to break it into pieces. So well, pieces of <laughs> pieces of our parent ion, and these pieces uh, are specific of finally the, the 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 chemical structure of the of the parent. They are not due to chance. They give us a lot of of information about the the, the, the parent, and uh, this is very useful for the the identification of uh, of the of the parent. So some uh, some application uh, some application uh, here with uh, uh, MS1 uh, simply uh, simply ions. Uh, this uh, this is uh, work that is uh, still in, in in progress. I told you that uh, the, the devices were new, so uh, we, we 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 gain in competencies, and uh, we 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 want to we, we expect to to be able uh, in two years. Be able to quantify uh, around the 600 of uh, phenolic compounds uh, in wines. It begins to be a, a large, uh, a, a, a large number. Uh, no quantification. Uh, another application uh, will be to to observe the relationships between observation. Imagine that well, you have a, a set of, uh, of samples. Here uh, it's uh, it's uh, wines, uh, wines from uh, different grape We have, a, we have a, so we have a, a set of samples, and you have done the acquisition of the MS1 spectra. 
and you you want uh, you want to, to you, uh, you can uh, you can perform a, a PCA on this on such data PCA or eventually uh, clustering. And so on the on the left uh, figure, you you will see uh, the, the 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 different observation uh, and the uh, observation which are close and uh, other which are which are far one from the other, and uh, so we have to interpret <laughs> such figure, but it it has uh, some uh, very interesting information about the, about the observation. And on the left, you can also uh, have a look at the variables. Uh, which led to, to the to the, the previous uh, figure. So this is with MS one. Uh, with MS two, we can go further. On, on the left, uh, okay, you have, you have uh, your, your 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 MS one spectra on your samples. You you can just build the, the correlation network between the different variables. That is the, the features the MZ values. But uh, but uh, usually uh, we have a few samples and a, a much larger number of variables. It can be a thousand of variables for dozens of uh, observations. So you have such figures with a lot of correlations. Uh, MS2, MS2 uh, can tackle this issue and help to identify the, the, the correlations which are relevant. In MS2, the, 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 it's, it's almost the, the same principle to, to build a correlation network, but here they are based on the MS2 spectra. And the two MS2 spectra are correlated if they share the same ions. It, it means that the, the parents belong to the same family. And effectively, in, uh, in such a, such a figure, uh, in correlation, you have, you have uh, groups of, uh, of uh, compounds uh, which gather together. And imagine that in this, uh, in this group here, you have uh, some ions that are known and others that are not known, unknown. Uh, but you know that un the unknown belong to the same family of the, 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 the known ions. And so, it's a very interesting information if you want to annotate to identify the the this ion. It's very it's something very it's something new for us, but I think that it will be a very uh, it will lead to uh, many application uh, in the in, in the in the following um, later. So, just uh, just uh, to summarize. Uh, mass, mass spectrometry. Uh, in just a few words, imagine that, that mass spectrometry uh, is a puzzle. Right? So your your uh, the MS one will give you uh, the different pieces of the puzzle, or a set of of, uh, of pieces, yeah? and MS two will help you to begin to gather the pieces which go together. Here it will be the the, the blue with the blue, the yellow with the yellow, yellow etc. And so it will help. To, 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 to build the entire figure of the, <laughs> of the pulse. <laughs> I don't see. Okay. Uh, we are not done with uh, mass spectrometry. Uh, we have also a second device, which is a uh, team stuff, which brings a second dimension, which is the ion mobility. So imagine that we have uh, you, you have your uh, MSN uh, MS1 uh, ion, and uh, they, they will uh, be separated in a flow of nitrogen. So it will depend on their uh, on their on their size on their, uh, on, their on their hydrodynamic volume, and this particularity is useful here for to separate uh, isomer. Isomer are compounds very similar, which share exactly the same exactly the same molecular weight, and so uh, in MS1 not possible to separate them. But here with any mobility, it's possible, and you can see here that, uh, for example, here the the peak uh, 18 uh, is composed of two two different uh, two different isomers, and here the, the 30 here we have three different isomers, which uh, which uh, are gathered in the, in the same peaks. 
So this is a tool very interesting for a structural characterization of the, of the polyphenol. Uh, second, uh, second uh, poll, uh, is a poll, um, NMR. We have two devices, uh, uh, 500 megahertz machine and uh, 400. The, the second one uh, will uh, uh, be equipped with sample, sampler, but uh, it, it, it's uh, just been installed uh, now. We have received the first uh, pieces of the machine in, in, in February and uh, we expect that it will be, uh, a, we, can, we will use it in, uh, in June or July. We really don't know. So, uh, and NMR, NMR is based on the, the re relaxation of uh, atoms. Uh, I will speak about uh, uh, NM, proton NMR, hydrogen. Uh, it can be uh, associated to uh, vibrational spectroscopy. It belongs to this uh, large family of analytical methods. That is, that is uh, NMR presents some uh, similarities with, uh, for example, uh, infrared spectroscopy. However, here the, the signal signals will be much more accurate because uh, uh, the, 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 the the hydrogen here will uh, will yield a signal which uh, depends strongly on their uh, environment, local environment, but. Uh, not, not only local. And you have a very good example here with the transferatrol and gallic acid, which share here uh, the same, uh, the, the two hydrogen have uh, locally the, the, the same environment here. You can see that this part of the molecule are, are, the, are the same here, but there are differences here and there, and also here and there. And this, these uh, different environments of uh, these two hydrogen here, Leads to different signals. Here we have the transferatrol here at 6.6, and uh, here at 7.1, uh, you have the, the, the gallic acid. Two different signals. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, in real life, uh, in fact, uh, it, uh, it yields a, a, very, a very huge number of signals, and uh, they have a tendency to overlay one, uh, one with the other, so it's not, not so, so, so simple. Uh, however, well, uh, likely they, they gather around some, uh, some region. So you have regions for the organic acids, for example, here, uh, for glycolols, since the uh, response to alcohol, uh, sugars are elsewhere here, and uh, aromatic compounds uh, in, in other, other specific regions corresponding to, uh, to different uh, families or molecules. Uh, NMR uh, is very useful for uh, quantification and uh, even even uh, an absolute quantification, if, even of a compound which has not been identified. But um, the difficulty is that uh, that uh, so, so we have so, some examples here for the for some uh, some sugars, uh, alcohol, also acids. Uh, some polyphenols. The, 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 the main limit is the, the, the sensitivity, which is not, uh, very good, uh, in, uh, in an MR. It's, uh, the sensitivity is much lower than in, uh, uh, mass spectrometry. NMR, uh, can, uh, can, uh, we can add a second dimension to uh, NMR, for example, NMR do, do Z, and we will add a uh, ionic uh, uh, diffusion coefficient, the, the, the diffusion coefficient, uh, which select the, the different compounds according to their molecular weight. That is a big, big molecule, uh, heavy molecule, uh, we have a low the, the, uh, Diffusion coefficient, uh, while a uh, uh, little mo molecule will have a, a higher uh, diffusion coefficient. And so, uh, even if you don't know the compound, uh, you can have an idea of its uh, molecular weight. 
And this has been uh, observed here with uh, four uh, known, uh, four or five known uh, compounds. Uh, previously, uh, I talked to you about uh, isomer, uh, the, uh, observed with the, 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 the Kim stuff. Uh, but now with NMR, we are able to identify, identify them precisely. Because uh, these all these molecules will differ by the their link, the link between the, 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 the molecules here are represented in red, which are different between the different isomer. isomer. And so uh and so uh well so if we study the, the if we study the, the, these links, we able to 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 know which iso isomer is present in the in the solution. We well, can see that uh, we can see we can make a, <laughs> a lot a lot of uh, a lot of uh, things a lot of analysis on uh, on polyph polyphenol. Uh, we have two identical uh, method, uh, mass spectrometry and NMR, and uh, they have a certain uh, complementarity for the, the characterization and quantification of uh, evolved uh, evolved uh, polyphenol. And uh, if you if you want uh, more. Uh, characterization on other compounds uh we can the support support of probe uh, for for polysaccharides proteins image uh, multi-component and sensory analysis uh, 